So uh, thanks, everybody. Uh, we are lucky enough at this point to hand moderating duties off to two sets of capable hands. Uh, to my right, the lovely Miha Sifri, uh, late of Personal Democracy Forum, uh, Harvard's Kennedy School, uh, a million and one other things. He has a lovely little book on WikiLeaks that I recommend. Uh, over to my left, the lovely Zephyr Teachout, um, most lately of Fordham Law School, uh, involved with uh, any manner of wonderful things, uh, early Global Voices uh, contributor, which I'm very grateful for, uh, longtime Berkman fellow, associate, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, with no further ado, on to you guys. Thank you, Ethan. Um, OK, so uh, I apologize on behalf of the uh, um, Harvard Law School, the entire uh, Harvard system, for the lack of uh, proper ca caffeine. There wasn't caffeine there. Did anybody get caffeine? I didn't get any caffeine. Uh, so we're going to have to, you know, we all store some extra caffeine in the lymph nodes. Call on it now. This is the last session of the day. I know there's always a danger that, that uh, energy can flag, but I think we can, we can bring it back and, and bring things to uh, a strong conclusion. Um, so before I bring up our, our uh, four presenters uh, who are going to be talking about uh, interventions for institutions, I'd like to uh, uh, just sort of open first by just picking up on uh, the, the power of metaphors that uh, Christian Sandvig uh, was offering us at the beginning of the last session where he talked about the different ways of thinking about the internet uh, and, and how those different frames, those metaphors, uh, maybe lead to uh, different ideas about how to intervene on this problem. Uh, but I actually want to go beyond the way we think about the internet to think about this whole question we've been wrestling with, which is you know, uh, our information system, uh, and to take a metaphor that my friend Craig Newmark, uh, who's up there, um, uh, likes to say, which is that the press or the media is the immune system of democracy. Uh, and I think in one form or another, that is what we've been talking about here, is uh, this system uh, of uh, people, ideas, interactions, uh, institutions uh, that play a role in, in how we uh, gather and filter information and make decisions uh, as a country or as a system, as a, uh, as a democracy. Um, and I also want to just flag uh, that I thought Ethan's uh, suggestion that we hunt for examples or we keep asking ourselves how tractable is this approach uh, that, you know, we recognize that, uh, you know, some of us like to work on the thing that will help uh, between now and November, uh, like Kathleen Hall Jameson's suggestion very actionable uh, to try and, and reduce the amount of deceptive TV ads that uh, air, uh, and others want to look uh, more broadly uh, at uh, institutional or in infrastructural kinds of responses uh, that maybe strengthen that immune system uh, beyond uh, you know, one election cycle or, or a particular uh, political event. Um, I would like to propose, uh, just as a transition, that, you know, we, we, there are individual approaches. Um, we heard a few already. Uh, I'd like to mention two more. One uh, very interesting new book uh, by uh, the former director of the Sunlight Labs, Clay Johnson, called The Information Diet, which suggests that uh, part of the solution here is for individuals, uh, the same way that uh, you know, we're all tempted to eat bad calories that, that aren't nutritious uh, because our bodies are wired to respond to things like sugar, uh, that we can also uh, perhaps train ourselves uh, to kind of be careful about what information we consume and, uh, uh, you know, in this digital age, also pay attention to how we consume information online. Um, so that metaphor of the individual trying to diet, uh, I think, could be a helpful one. I'd, I'd like to offer another one, which is, uh, uh, you know, that we, we also think about the role that individuals can play uh, themselves as, um, uh, you know, uh, asking better questions as, as people, whether we are, uh, you know, professionally in that role as journalists or as amateurs, uh, as just citizens, uh, uh, encountering situations where uh, a timely question asked um, can make a difference. Uh, and that, you know, uh, personally, I'm, I'm looking uh, for ways to increase the supply of good questions um, and to reward. Uh, whether it's professional journalists or amateurs, uh, when they do ask good questions. Um, 
that you know, perhaps we can stimulate uh, as a society uh, that practice. Um, but just to go back to this uh, 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 metaphor of the immune system, um, it seems to me that uh, if, we, if we take that uh, as an operating metaphor, then we do have to admit that um, bad information, misinformation uh, is with us to stay uh, the same way that uh, bugs and viruses are also with us to stay. We're never going to stamp them out. Uh, we just have to develop vaccines or uh, develop uh, ways of, of uh, um, you know, keeping the body healthy, uh, but understanding that uh, they are too part of the system. And so I want to suggest that maybe as we think about infra infrastructure that uh, what we're talking about here, institutional responses, is a kind of public health approach to uh, this problem of misinformation, truthiness, um, and that the same way that it took modern society uh, a while to figure this out, that uh, you know, actually disease isn't just something that floats in the air, but it's, for example, in uh, dirty water, and thus we uh, start investing in things like clean water and, and sewage systems, that uh, we, we also have to think in the same way about what kinds of, uh, what sort of infrastructure do we need to get a, a, a healthier information ecosystem. And I don't have all the answers, but maybe uh, some of the next group of people who are presenting can offer us some um, uh, and in, in this context. And, and uh, so just hold that thought of public health approach, strengthening the immune system of democracy. And I'd like to bring up now um, our first speaker. We're going to go in the order of the people listed in the program.